Hello everyone and welcome to Demystifying Wolf Parks in White. This lecture was already pre-recorded on our ECG class, which you can learn about at the end of the video if you're interested. And without further ado, let's get into Demystifying Wolf Parks in White. Wolf Parks in White, or WPW, is a congenital heart defect and is pre-excitation syndrome. This syndrome has a bypass tract or accessory pathway called the Bundle of Kent that extends through a hole in the fibrous skeleton or as electrophysiologists I spoke to called it, a standard tissue that transverses from atria to ventricles. ECG findings for wolf parks of white include a short PR interval, a slurred upstroke of the QRS called the delta wave, and a widened QRS complex due to the delta wave, an accessory pathway. So what is pre-excitation? It is the early activation of ventricles caused by an accessory pathway that bypasses the AV node. And now there are three types. Anterior grade, which is when the impulse heads down the AV node to the bundle of hiss and then up the accessory pathway, which you'll be able to see here. Next is retrograde, which is when the impulse heads up the AV node and down the accessory pathway. And finally, both where the accessory pathway has anterior grade and retrograde abilities. So these are the types of accessory pathways. You have atrioventricular, which is the most common atrionodal atrial fascicular, nodoventricular, nodofascicular, and fasciculoventricular. But the one we will be talking about is atrioventricular because it's the most common. So just like Brugada, there's a difference between Wolfparkinson White sign and syndrome. Wolfparkinson White sign is the ECG changes seen with no symptoms, whereas the syndrome has symptoms associated with ECG findings. As you can see, electrophysiology doesn't use the type A, type B Wolfparkinson White. They just describe the path location, but for simplicity's sake, we'll use type A and type B. So type A is Wolfers of White with a left-sided accessory pathway. Type B has a right-sided accessory pathway track. Wolfers of White can also be concealed, where you don't see the delta wave at all. And there's intermittent, where there's a nice match of concealed delta waves and obvious delta waves on a rhythm strip. So we know that type A is left-sided and type B is right-sided. Type A will have a dominant R wave in V1, and type B has a dominant S wave in V1. And type A has a positive delta waves in the precordial leads, while type B has negative or inverted delta waves in V1 or V2. So here's our 12 lead for Wolfparks White type A. If you look all around, you can see delta waves all over the place. Just know that this doesn't always happen, so make sure you scrutinize every lead for delta waves. So we do have a dominant R wave noted, in V1, and if you look in V1 through V6, you can see that the delta wave is positive in every one of those precordial leads. All right, this is our Wolfparks of White type B. So look in V1, do we have a dominant S wave? Yes, we do. Now look for a negative delta wave in V1 or V2. I see one in V1. You can see it is inverted and the slurring is noted in V1. If you actually flip the image, it will look like a normal delta wave. Now we talk about tachyarrhythmias. So there are two main types of tachyarrhythmias associated with Wolfparks and White. You have atrial ventricular reentrant tachycardia, or AVRT, and atrial fibrillation with Wolfparks and White. But there are different types of AVRT. There is orthodromic, which is the most common, and antidromic. Orthodromic AVRT is a narrow complex tachycardia that is your typical SVT pattern, and sometimes you can see retrograde P waves. Antidromic is a very deadly and serious type of AVRT. So here's our normal Wolfparkson White pathway. Your SA node sends our signal that depolarizes the atria. Some of the impulses branch off of the internodal pathways and head down the accessory pathway. Once this impulse hits the ventricles, it is delayed because it has a slow myocyte to myocyte conduction. The normal conduction impulse enters the AV node where it is slightly slowed. The normal conduction impulse then shoots down the Hisperkinji system, and then the accessory pathway impulse slowly travels through the ventricle. These impulses eventually hit each other and collide, which cancels them out. Now, neither impulse can continue after this point because they've canceled each other out. Okay, same thing happens in orthodromic AVRT. The SA node shoots off an impulse that heads down the normal conduction pathway and down the accessory pathway. And like before, the normal conduction impulse shoots down the Hisperkinji system, and the accessory pathway impulse slowly travels through the ventricles. 
Now, a perfectly timed PVC occurs in the ventricles and can actually cancel out the accessory pathway impulse. The normal conduction pathway impulse depolarizes like normal now. But now, the impulse doesn't get canceled out by the accessory pathway tracked impulse, so it will head up the accessory pathway, sometimes stimulating the SA node and head down the AV node. And this creates a re-entrance circuit. The impulse goes around and around and around and the AV node does slow the impulse down a little bit because it is heading down the normal pathway. Here's an example of orthodromic AVRT on an ECG. It is a narrow complex tachycardia with no P waves noted. It's your typical SVT appearance. Okay, now we talk about the more deadly antidromic AVRT pathway. Like normal, the SA node sends out an impulse, an impulse heads down the accessory pathway, and one heads down towards the AV. A PAC occurs and knocks out the impulse heading to the AV node. Now the accessory pathway moves myocyte to myocyte until it hits the normal conduction system at the his Purkinje system, where it rockets up to the AV node. Now we have an impulse heading retrograde up the AV node, where it is not slow because it is coming from the opposite direction. The impulse then heads interior grade down the accessory pathway, creating a re-entrance circuit. Here's an example of your antidromic AVRT ECG. It is a regular wide complex tachycardia. It can be fixed with adenosin, but what did we say about wide complex tachycardias? Just treat it like VTAC and light them up, which is the safest treatment for tachycardic arrhythmias. So now we get into the final rhythm that can occur in wolf parks of white patients, which is AFib with pre-excitation slash WPW. Remember that in a normal atrial fibrillation, the atria have 400 to 600 impulses going through them a minute. So why isn't our ventricular rate that high? Well, it's because the AV node acts as a gatekeeper and squashes out a lot of these impulses. But because of the accessory pathway, impulses will skip the AV node and head straight down to the ventricles. But the AV node is still squashing quite a bit of these impulses. So in AFib with WPW, the ventricular rate can hit around 300 beats per minute. The ECG findings for AFib with WPW include an irregularly irregular wide complex tachycardia with changing QRS morphologies and sizes. The rates are nearing 300 beats per minute. If you think back of all your AFib with RVR patients, most of them won't ever go to over 200 beats per minute. So if the rate is nearing 300 beats per minute, start thinking of pre-excitation. Our treatment for these include procanamide and synchronized cardioversion. Don't give amiodarone, beta blockers, digoxin, or lidocaine. These will kill the AV node and then all the 400 to 600 impulses will head down the accessory pathway and send these patients into ventricular fibrillation. Now a little bit more on amiodarone. Amiodarone is typically classified as a class 3 antiarrhythmic drug that primarily focuses on the potassium channels of the heart that are responsible for repolarization process of the phase 3 of the cardiac action potential. Amiodarone is not typically marketed this way, but it also acts on the beta adrenergic receptors calcium channels, and sodium channels. The beta adrenergic effect on the AV node will send the patient into ventricular fibrillation. Percanamide doesn't affect the AV node and will only impact the accessory pathway. This should be the only medication given to stable AFib with wolf parks of white patients. The safest way to deal with any tachyarrhythmias is sedation followed by 200 joules. Synchronized cardioversion is always the safest way dealing with this kind of rhythm and all other lethal tachyarrhythmias. Okay, so this is our AFib with Wolf Parkinson White. You can see that in some leads, the rate is nearing 300 beats per minute. And it's got a widened QRS, so this is a wide complex tachycardia. If you look in V2, you can see that it's irregularly irregular. But if you look kind of just in lead 2, it sort of kind of looks like polymorphic VTAC, which is what the actual provider thought this was. But regardless, it is irregularly irregular. If you look in V1 through V3, you can see the changing QRS morphologies and sizes, so that gives a check as well. And here's the post-conversion 12 lead. You can clearly see delta waves in 1, 2, AVL, V3, V4, V5, and V6. There are negative delta waves in lead 3, AVR, and V1. And that's going to wrap up our Wolf Puxton White Lecture. Now, if you really enjoyed this content, this actually came from our ECG class that we have on our website, which you can see here and also have a link down in the description. And as you can see, you can learn all of these ECG topics right here in our course. So if this interests you, go ahead and check it out. If not, you guys have a wonderful day.